Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. We've got to talk about Nicole, which is now fully a tropical storm, and it is going to have some impacts, significant impacts on the Carolinas, but it will not be a very strong storm. So there's some good news, bad news. It is going to bring a lot of rain, which we desperately need. It's going to bring some wind with it as well, which isn't so bad, but the storm surge is always, and the coastal flooding, that is probably the bad news, and that's the worst part about this system. But So let's get right to the details. Here's our system. If you haven't looked at satellite today, it looks a lot more impressive. Still not a perfect system. You can see the center is exposed to the south. There's still a lot of dry air wrapping around the south side of this. So while it is tropical now because it's warmer near the center, it's feeding off the warm waters of the Gulf Stream as it gets to the northern Bahamas, it still has some of those kind of subtropical or hybrid characteristics, kind of looks like a big uh, comma. That also means it has a very large wind field still. And that's the important thing about the storm surge and the wind um, issues that we're going to see on the coast because all of the wind out here is pushing water towards the South and North Carolina coast right now. And those tides are going to continue to get higher and higher. We're going to see coastal flooding likely, uh, some beach erosion and the waves on top. So high surf, all the, all the marine issues you have with a storm, a nor'easter or a hurricane on the coast. Now it's expected to push off to the west and become a hurricane probably right before landfall. So let's get right to the forecast here. We'll kind of show you the forecast heading through the northern Bahamas, making landfall somewhere. I'm gonna move my head out of the way here so you can see it. Somewhere here on the east coast of Florida, Wednesday evening. So tomorrow night, um, as a minimal hurricane, 75 mile an hour winds. But again, it's gonna have a large wind field. So the winds will be over a pretty large area, especially the tropical storm force winds. Now, once it moves inland over Florida, two things happen. It's weakening because it's moving over land, but it's also interacting with the big upper trough that's gonna start shifting it off to the north and east. That will help weaken it as well, but it's also gonna let it spread out and become more extra tropical. What I mean by that is becomes a larger, kind of more jet stream driven system. So while you see this track off to the northeast, very quickly. I mean, look at this. At 7 p.m. Friday morning, it's down here in Georgia. And by Saturday morning, it's up here in upstate New York or New England. So it's going to be flying. But the wind field is going to be huge. It's going to take up this whole area. Remember, the cone only shows you where the center is. It does not show you where the impacts are. So that kind of shows you the overall movement off to the north and east. Now, let's go to the future cast, kind of show you the impacts of the rain as it's pushing, because the rain and the wind are going to be a big issue on Friday. All right, so let's look at that future cache. You can see our system, the arrows are indicating the wind speed and direction. So you can see that the system pushing towards the Florida coast is actually gonna have a pretty large wind field. And part of the reason why is there's an area of high pressure over New England, that clockwise flow around high pressure, low pressure down here, the pressure gradient between the two will produce some pretty strong winds even way ahead of the system. So this onshore flow, look at all that wind coming towards the coast. This is why the water levels on the, on the coast are gonna be a big issue. Um, over the next couple of days, more so than you would think with a system that's probably not as strong as you might normally expect. So there's our hurricane tropical storm, Nicole making landfall. Um, again, this is on probably Wednesday night into early Friday or into early Thursday morning. You know, Thursday doesn't look bad. You know, this is 1 p.m. Thursday afternoon. As we get into Thursday night, here comes the rain. So we've got a home Panthers game. If you're going to the game, likely going to see some heavy rain there at times late in the game. But it's really Friday that the heavy stuff moves in. Friday looks like a really soggy day. In fact, widespread rain, low clouds, drizzle, fog even in between the rain, and windy. Um, the winds could gust up to 30, 35 miles an hour, sustained 20 to 30. So we go into the afternoon pretty ugly, into Friday evening still ugly, Friday night. Things slowly start to improve after midnight. And by Saturday morning, the system is off over the northeast and out of here. So the weekend is fine. To me, this is a late Thursday night into early Friday event. And again, the main concern here is going to be heavy rain and wind. So let's look at the steering currents real quickly here. I'm going to show you the water vapor loop. You can see the big trough coming into the western U.S. This thing is a big cool down for us. It's going to pick up Nicole and race it off to the northeast. So the steering currents are very straightforward. Um, there's not a lot of indication that there's uncertainty this is going to go far west. In fact, it might not make it all the way across Florida. It's probably going to make it to Florida and then race up the east coast through the Carolina. Some of the impacts, obviously rainfall being number one, updated rainfall forecast shows at least two to four inches of rain for most of North Carolina. Some areas near the coast could pick up four to five inches of rain. This is gonna be a real soaker. When you look at it by day, that's day one, that's today, tomorrow, Thursday, here comes the rain. Most of this late in the day. Friday is the bulk of that. You could see Friday really was the day that this stuff moved in and by the weekend, 
it's kind of out of here. So what about wind speeds real quickly? These are the 72 hour max wind gusts. So basically through Thursday at 7 p.m., about 25 to 30 miles per hour. But we can take a look at some of the other gusts from some of the model guidance here, kind of give you a rough idea as we go into Thursday. I'm gonna go into Thursday, um, Friday, so Thursday night into Friday morning. You can see this is about one o'clock um, Friday afternoon. Most of the gusts are around 30 to 35 miles an hour, some 40 mile an hour gusts near the coast. So we could see some tropical storm force gusts there. And then as we go into Friday night into Saturday, the winds will begin to calm down. So the winds aren't crazy high. If we go back to um, my maps here real quickly, I'll show you the probabilities of seeing tropical storm force winds. Um, you can see the probabilities for most of our area between 15 and 20 percent. So those are a little higher than they were yesterday. I certainly think that could be an issue uh, on Friday, especially if we get wet ground. Could bring a tree or two down. The winds themselves won't do it. It's really going to be a combination of wet soil and eventually the, the, the trees getting worked over. Now, this is the biggest issue, as it always is. Um, we'll talk about the the, the the surge on the coast, basically. Because of the shape of our coast and the shape of this system, you can see the coastline like this, big, broad circulation. Remember, high pressure over the northeast is going to help aid in this, this push of water. So this onshore wind is going to push really heavy, heavy um, water towards the coast, and we're going to see some of these um, levels. And again, the darker red is about four and a half feet of inundation, so four and a half feet above mean sea level. And you can see the typical areas, a lot of coastal areas, marshy areas, but there will be some areas, especially around Charleston, which is very prone to flooding, um, that we'll, we'll see. Again, not a huge surge, but it's more that the high tides keep coming up and don't go down. As we get into North Carolina, you can see some of these areas where the intercoastal waterway from Ocean Isle Beach, probably some high water. Holden Beach would definitely have some erosion issues. Um, anything that faces south and east and then up into the Outer Banks, um, you're going to see some issues as well. Uh, especially uh, on the Outer Banks themselves. I do expect some overwash out there. So the water is going to be a big issue on the coast just because of the prolonged onshore flow that's going to develop. So that is going to be the story. Let's go back to our future cast real quickly here and just kind of show you this setup because I think the timing is going to be really important. So think Thursday night through Friday, really heavy rain for most of Friday. And again, the winds 25 to 35 miles an hour, some gust could go higher, especially east but the rainfall two to four inches. The good news is we're in a drought. We need the rain. So we're going to be able to handle a lot of this rainfall that we normally wouldn't be able to handle. There still could be some minor flooding issues. I certainly believe that's possible. If we go to the, the hurricane center site, you can see the flash flood potential for the next uh, three days going into Thursday night into Friday morning. Um, already has most of Ca South Carolina, North Carolina in that, that marginal to slight risk. So low to medium risk already for some flash flooding. And as far as the rainfall, you can see they have us in the two to four. So that kind of makes sense based on what we're seeing right now. So the timing again, late Thursday night through Friday, but gone for the weekend. Of course, I will post updates over the next couple of days. The good news here is we need the rain. The wind won't be crazy high. The bad news to me is gonna be on the coast. Storm surge, beach erosion, that is gonna be our primary concern there. So if you're in the coastal sections, pay attention local officials. We're likely gonna see some type of coastal flooding overwash, and definitely some beach erosion. Because it's November, this is going to be a very raw system. Don't expect warm temperatures. Most of the temperatures are going to be in the 60s all day long on Thursday and Friday with the clouds and showers and then turning much colder for the weekend, which is a whole nother vlog as the pattern turns cold and maybe snowy for parts of the Carolinas by the time we get into the weekend and early next week.